Hey guys, welcome back. So today I got a video that I'm actually really excited about. Um, I'm going to be figuring out one of the last steps of adapting together the drivetrain for the boat tail speedster that I've been building. A while ago I had a couple part series showing how I went from a Jaguar engine to a Ford bell housing and clutch components to this Chevy transmission. And now I'm going to be adapting that back to a Ford, early Ford, um, closed drive shaft. So this particular transmission is a T5 transmission out of a Chevy S10 pickup truck. And this is a very popular transmission for a lot of early style hot rods. People like to adapt this newer transmission as opposed to, you know, like the early Ford three speed crash boxes because you get a couple extra gears. It's five speed with overdrive and it shifts so much nicer. nicer. Um, and it's just like a really nice transmission for that application. And there's a lot of you know aftermarket resources for adapting this to you know a Ford V8 or other other engines and things like that. So what I'm doing is this is actually the four-wheel drive version of the transmission. You can tell because it has this big flange on the back here where the transfer case would initially bolt to. But I'm going to be using this to adapt it back to the early Ford closed drive shaft. Most people just use the two-wheel drive transmission and then run an open drive shaft. Um, but I didn't want to do that because I wanted to keep the, you know, the compactness of the closed drive shaft. It takes up a lot less room and I don't need like a four length suspension or anything like that in the rear. So in this video I'm going to be showing you how I designed and built uh, this adapter right here. This is, has a custom U-joint yoke in it with a custom aluminum adapter plate. And this slides right onto the back of the transmission here. And then that bolts on and then now and now from here back it's it's a early Ford transmission you can you can bolt your um, your torque tube mounts on here so I'm going to be showing you how I made this whole adapter plate assembly too I'm also going to put the drawings in there all my drawings and everything like that all the parts I use in the description because I think this can actually be really useful for um, someone who has a lathe who has you know maybe a small milling machine too and they want to make a similar adapter for for their vehicle. So enjoy the video. Alright so to get started here I started by designing everything out in SolidWorks here and this gives me a really good idea of everything that has to happen and all the critical dimensions that I'll have to hit when I'm making this adapter plate. So you can see in this assembly here this back flange right there is really just the the back flange here of the transmission and it's got the output shaft running up through the middle there on the end of which is this U-joint yoke. It's got a bearing in there for support and then this custom aluminum adapter plate that just kind of ties everything together. So the one part of this that I did not make myself is the actual U-joint yoke right here. Uh, this is a custom piece made by Dave Farwell from Vintage Metalworks and he actually makes a lot of adapter plates for you know er adapting early engines to later transmissions and vice versa and a lot of cool stuff that can come in handy for different hot rod projects and stuff. And he does actually manufacture a whole kit for this that I probably could have bought, but what's the fun in that, right? So I just bought this U-joint yoke, which is the, the most difficult part because, you know, the spline adapter there is, is the one thing that I really don't have the resources to do myself. Everything else, though, is pretty straightforward. So I've got that. This I will then attach with one of these cross pieces. This is an old cross piece, but I'll buy a new remanufactured one that'll connect that to the other half of the U-joint right there. And this goes to the Ford drive shaft. And I've got the um, bearing here, which will press on the back of that U-joint. And the, then to make the adapter plate, I've got this nice big chunk of aluminum here and some drawings that I made up for um, that adapter plate and all the dimensions that it has to be. And all this stuff is in the description too. I'm going to lay it out as easily as I can in case anyone wants to follow along with the similar, a similar sort of adapter. So all that stuff's in the description and now it's time to actually start cutting into this nice big block here. So I'm going to cut this down, take it over to the bandsaw first, cut it into a circle and then start machining. So.
right, so you can see here now I've got the adapter plate mostly machined up by now. Uh, you can see the holes drilled on the front here for the drive shaft now. Those are these couple pieces here that bolt right on the front like that. The center here I have bored out for this bearing to press into. That'll then press in around you know the U-joint as well to give it support there. This should be about a one thou interference fit there measured uh, from the bearing. Uh, I cut that groove in around there for this big snap ring to fit in to make sure the bearing doesn't you know work its way out at all and to hold it in there. Um, this little kind of you know sweeping chamfer I put on there pretty much just for aesthetic purposes. Uh, it is nice to thin that out a little bit and you know the curve makes it look a little nicer I think. So now I just have to um, drill the holes to mount it to the actual uh, transmission. So you can see here you know this back lip there is designed to fit right around you know the bore on the end of the transmission here and it's a nice nice close fit and so what I'll do then is I'll you know line this up vertical I'll use a couple clamps here to clamp it onto the back of that transmission flange there and then I have this little um, transfer punch here that I made that I'll just kinda you know slip in the in the holes here on the transmission housing and then just tap it to put a little center punch at each spot where I have to, to drill a hole. And then I'll just uh, drill them in from the back side and then counterbore them from the front since they're going to be in this um, sloped area. Alright, so check it out now. It is completely machined and pretty much finished. The one little thing I do still have to do is I just have to tap these holes completely all the way down. The only tap that I have that's the right size is pretty dull and it kind of binds up after, you know, four or five threads. So rather than breaking the tap, I was just going to buy a new sharp one and, and finish it off with that. Um, but other than that little thing, it's pretty much done. It's really cool to actually see this come together from from the design. Um, so now what I have to do is actually assemble it. I'm going to start by pressing in this bearing into the back here. And I kind of made this so that the little lip in here on the inside, or I guess on the outside of that snap ring groove, is slightly bigger than the actual bore for where the bearing sits. So that'll help guide this in straight. I can kind of drop this in the first part of it there, and the bearing will line up with that part, and then I can, you know, press it in the rest of the way. And then once I get that in, I'll press the U-joint in on top of the bearing and it'll all be fixed together as one piece, put in the snap rings and it should be good to go. Alright, so that bearing went in really well. Uh, next up is this snap ring to go right on top of it. Uh, this is <laughs> much too big for my little pliers here. So what I did was I, I just welded a couple nails onto the front of these fire tongs. So hopefully this will work.
right, so that went right in, and look, it actually spins. No clearance issues between you know the U joint here and the housing or that snap ring in there. It's pretty close, but it's it's definitely going to work. Um, so now, just on the back side here, you can see uh, the bearing ends in here, but the snap ring groove is out here. So what I did is I made up this this special brass spacer, just fit in. Uh, take up that extra room there. If you're wondering, well, couldn't I have just machined another uh, snapping groove to go closer to that bearing? Yes, I certainly could have. All right, so there is the finished assembly now. It's all together, everything's pressed in, all the snap rings are in, and it's all one piece now. It's not coming apart. and. You can see here, you just line up the splines on the output shaft of the transmission here. And then that fits right on. And then of course you just line up the holes there, put the bolts in. And one thing I did do for the outside washers here, is I did turn this down, these washers down a little bit, so they're a little bit narrower than a normal, you know, full size 3 8 washer. Um, that's pretty much just so that the counter bore on this side here would fit in this space nicely. I didn't want to extend it too far to the edge here because I didn't think that would look good. Um, but this size has it nicely centered there in the in this kind of chamfer area there. And it still gives just enough room to fit a socket over the head of that bolt. So that just slides in there. Then on the other side here you have a normal full size washer, a lock washer, and then a nut that slides, that screws right on there. So that bolts together all pretty straightforward. Uh, and then on the front here, we've got these couple pieces here. This is to connect to the actual closed drive shaft. So this piece goes on first right there. And then the, the torque tube for the drive shaft fits right onto here. And then you have this, this clamp that, you know, fits right over top of that. Um, I have that drive shaft over here, just kind of sitting in the car right now. You can see, obviously this is way too long right now. This will have to be shortened so that, you know, this front bell is about, about there. So it needs to shorten quite, quite a bit. Um, but you can see this is how the closed drive shafts work. This is that piece that slides on first, and then it's really just a ball and socket joint uh, from right there that your whole rear end uh, pivots from. So that is fixed up there. This is a torque tube that's mounted salt rigidly to the rear axle. The drive shaft runs inside of that, and then your whole rear end pivots from the back of the transmission right there. And this is the way uh, a lot of cars were built back in the, you know, the 30s and 40s. Certainly the Fords were built this way up until 1948 or so. Um, but that's pretty much where I am with this. I think it's turned out really nice and it was a really fun machining project here. I love machining aluminum like this because you know it, it gives a great finish and it moves really quickly and you can really, really make some cool parts. And it's a lot of fun to, you know, see it come together from, from a drawing and a block of aluminum to the finished piece. So that's it for today. In the next video, well the next part of this series, I'll be um, shortening the torque tube and shortening the drive shaft and getting it all bolted up in the car. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.